1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to pick up about verse 13 and read on down. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Got two little sections here from 13 on down to 16 is talks a little bit about their conversion. And then 17 on down to 20 is Paul's longing for the Thessalonians once again, for these brothers and sisters in Christ to, to be with them and to be in their company. Listen to what he has to say in 13. We read this about a week or two ago. For this reason we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, for you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove, and drove us out. They are not pleasing to God, but hostile to all men. They hinder us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they might be saved, or may be saved, with the result that they always fill up the measure of their own sins, for wrath has come upon them to the utmost. But we, brethren, we, having been taken away from, from you for a short while in person, but not in spirit, were all the more eager with a great desire to see your face. For we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, more than once, yet Satan hindered us for who is our hope or joy or crown of exaltation? Is it not even you, in the presence of the Lord Jesus that is coming? For you are our glory and our joy. Well, these are most definitely the words of a, of a caring man for other believers. These are most definitely the words of, of, a, of an individual who has such a such a desire such a care for people you can you can read between the lines his his joy his happiness as he speaks of their conversion it thrills him to see and speak of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and their conversion. Therefore, we never stop thanking God. In other words, when you received His message from us in verse 13, you didn't simply this look to our words as, as, as human ideas or, or human drives, human thoughts. But you accepted what we said as the very word of God, he says. This wasn't driven by man. What we said wasn't driven by man. What we spoke to you was the word of God, the very word of God. It was spoken to you by us, but the power of it was from the Lord God Himself. And we see this word as it continues to work in you. Pretty much He's saying as His, as his word continues to work in you in verse 13. On a daily basis. It continues to, to enrich you. It continues to enrich the mind is what He's saying. The Word of God does that. It's, it enriches the mind. It enriches the heart. It enriches the soul. It 
it enriches everything about the, the believer and the believer's walk to Christ and for Christ, for the glory of Christ. It's sad because the lost world knows nothing of this enrichment. The lost world knows, knows nothing of this, this sanctifying power of the Word of God. It knows nothing of this sanctifying power. It knows nothing of this changing power. The lost world is, is led and guided by the one he mentions, Paul mentions, down a little bit in verse down as he moved down through there as he mentions Satan as Satan what in verse 18 prevented them buffered them from getting back to his precious little church Paul says we loved you and we see how the Word of God continuously works in your life. It continuously works in you. It changes you. It changes everything about you on a daily basis. That's the power of the Word of God, isn't it? The more you study the Word of God, the more you, the more you pray to the Holy One, to the very One that saved you, there's this... There's this change that only can come from, that only can come from the Lord Jesus. It only comes through His, His power, His directing power, His leading, His guiding. This change only comes from Him. Paul says we, we see that change in you, in you people, in you Christians. We see that change. In our lives, the world should see changed people. As you walk and serve Christ, the world, should, the world around you should, should see a, a changed person. One that's continuously being what? One that's continuously being nourished. One that's continuously being sanctified. Set apart. to the truth that only happens to the believer there are a lot of people that think oh the gospel that's just philosophy yep the gospel is what sanctifies yep. us yep I mean I was just reading that the law gospel uh, and it's, it's really driving that point home Okay, you get saved by the gospel, and then you live by the law. Well, the law is a guide, but the law doesn't motivate. Only Christ motivates. Only the gospel motivates. And man, that's hard as a father, too. Because we, we want to be the taskmaster. We want to say, kids, you follow my law. You do what I say. We forget the gospel. As, as a preacher, as a uh, father, as a, an employer, as a boss, whatever, we forget the gospel. The law still has its proper place as a God, but it has never motivated. Because yeah. you got to do it perfectly for it to be your motivation. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. I mean, we forget that. We forget the gospel in our lives, especially as a church leadership, especially as preachers, you kind of eventually, if you're not careful, you find yourself just just rip-roaring law and speaking little of grace and the gospel. It's power to change and, and reminding yourself daily that, that you were changed by the truth. You rest in your your life rests in the Word of God. Your rest your life rests in the changing power of Scripture. And, and you're right. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, you will find yourself what is in 
it's the first Corinthians chapter 13 or you'll be like a clanging bell or whatever you know it's Paul talks about and and if you have not love and you'll have all this you'll have all knowledge you'll have all you have all knowledge so much wisdom so much understanding but and that's what happens to a lot of a lot of preachers in certain in certain divisions or areas if you will they they turn into this clanging bell it's just over and over and over again this this five gallon bucket 55 gallon drum of law of law of law and they forget the gospel well, I mean, that's exactly what verse 13 started with the first part you yep. receive the word of God yep. it's Christ Yeah. who believe it's still working the gospel yep. is still working that's Christ in sanctification it's that the duplex gratia double grace Christ for pardon and justification Christ for power and in sanctification yeah. Yeah. for this reason we also constantly thank God when you received the word of God which you heard from us you accepted it not as the word of man but what it really is the word of God which performs the work in you who believe he's speaking of his conversion in them performs its work it guides us it's a counselor it, it restores us it revives us it directs us it does so much to us. But if we're not careful, we lose the heart that we see Paul with here this evening in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we end up with this heart of just hammering home over and over again, and but not hammering home with love and compassion and without a doubt you do not bend on scripture but there's truly a balance there to to be caring and loving and as you see here with Paul and as he longs to see the church as he says, For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For also you endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. He said, I, I, I see that, that, that you became what? You suffered much persecution from your own people. But you were imitators of those that believed in in the church, in, in, in Christ. You were God's church. It's all because of Christ. You believed in the one who suffered, who died, who lived the perfect life. You believed in Him. You believed in the one that they killed. And now they persecute you, and, and now they're persecuting me, and they fail to please God, and they and they work against them. all that's all that's right, all that's good, all that's holy. They're against that. He's saying in verse sixteen, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles, so that they might be saved. They try to keep us from preaching the good news of salvation to the Gentiles. They always, they try to keep us from proclaiming the truth to, to those lost too. Well, like you said a few minutes ago, verse 18, who hindered them to Satan? Yes. And you, you see right back here in verse 16, and going back into verse 14, your own countrymen hindered. They were, they were just they were doing 
as their father the devil. Yep. They were instruments of Satan. Yes. Yep. Doing as their father the devil does. As Justin said, they were instruments of Satan. They were carrying out his plan. And Paul recognizes that. He recognizes the plan that's being carried out. And he calls it out. You're doing, they were doing the work of Satan. They were doing the work of their father. And by doing this, they continue to pile up sin upon sin upon sin. But the anger of the Lord will catch up. The wrath of the Lord has come unto them to the utmost. But the anger of the Lord, the wrath of God has caught up with them at last. It's arrived. They didn't realize they were piled up sin after sin after sin. Their own judgment. The anger of God has caught up with them at last. That's the thing about, you know, you, you, you hear people talk about from time to time, I say, I can't believe so-and-so gets away with so much or whatever it is in the world, whatever's going on, or they'll, they'll pick a name and they'll run off with it. But it's just a matter of time before the anger of the Lord, not that it catches up with them, because the Lord don't catch up with nobody. But the anger of the Lord comes upon them. And judgment is, is catapulted upon them in one form or another while here on earth. And they suffer the consequences of their, of their misbehavior, of their refusal of a righteous God. And they're longing to serve their father, Satan himself, the father of the world. Paul says, I, I, I love to hear, to see your conversion. It's nothing, it's, it's pretty neat when you, when you hear somebody's conversion. Especially those that have been saved and not long, and you, you, you hear them talk about their conversion and the Lord moving in their life. It's just a, it's pretty, it's a pretty neat experience to, and you, you probably heard people speak of their conversion. I'm sure you spoke of your own. And Paul says, I, I'm thrilled, if you will, at your conversion. Your brothers and sisters, he says in verse 17, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short while in person, not in spirit, were all the more eager, a great desire to see your face. He says, We've been separated from you for a time, and we've been we've been separated from you. We've been separated from you for for a little while. Though our hearts have never left you we tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again the separation now he speaks of this of this separation forcibly being separated from from his brothers and sisters in Christ and I don't know if it's anxiety not that, but just an overwhelming desire to be with them, to see them. To be in the presence of them. They've been forcibly separated from these people, from the Thessalonians. But he says uh, simply this, We were physically separated from you, but not in spirit. Not in our hearts, not in spirit. We are all the more eager with a great desire to see your face. Oh, 
Our hearts, our spirit never left. We tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. Our intense longing to see you again. Isn't their intense longing to see these believers? This is a desire of one who cares for believers. Not one who's consumed with himself or herself. But one who cares for believers. One who has a care at, at, at nothing else but this. This is the longing. This is the care. Our intense longing to see you again. You know the care of the church. He speaks of that in, 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 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He speaks of the care of the church. We've talked about that in the past as he, as he mentions all that he goes through. And in 2 Corinthians 11, 28, he talks about, Paul talks about his, his, his care for the church. He's not consumed with himself, as he mentions in 2 Corinthians 11, 28. But he's consumed with the church. He's consumed with Christ's church. He's consumed with the care of Christ's church. He's longing to see Christ's church here. Christ's children. As he lists the litany of all that he's been through in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He gets to 28 and he, he says, And through all of this I have this overwhelming care for the church. And here you see it again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17. A longing to see you again. A long to see you again. I'll, I'll read very quickly 2 Corinthians verse 28. Besides all this, besides all this, pretty much this, the daily burden, the daily burden of the church, the daily care, the concern for all the churches the concern for the churches. Besides all that he's went through, all that he's endured, he mentions the concern for the churches. Those he's able to get to from time to time and those he's not able to get to. The Jew as, as, as well as the, the Greek We could take a page out of Paul's life and in our own lives and examine our own lives and as we tear out a page of in Paul's life and how long how much do we long and care for for others within the church and by longing to see you again. Oh, we want it so much to come to you, he says. It's just that Paul didn't try one time we wanted to come to you I Paul more than once and now, in other words over and over I, I tried I tried to come to you Paul was saying but as Justin said before but it was it was Satan it was Satan who stepped in it was Satan who hindered us it was Satan who prevented us prevented this from happening it was him He was leading these evil people. As he was leaving, he leading these evil people who, who tried to keep us from preaching the good news of salvation to the Gentiles as they continuously piled up their own sins. Sin after sin after sin against themselves. Satan who prevented us. Satan who hindered us. Yeah. Verse 12, 
Uh, Where's that at? Uh, chapter 12, just the next chapter. Yeah. Yep. I want you, I'm coming for you. And, you know, we look at Corinth and Thessalonica. Thessalonica is in, in the north. That's that's Macedonia. Where, you know, whatever yeah. we see Macedonia mentioned, we're thinking Thessalonica. And then you've got Corinth in the south. That's Achaia. And he mentions both of them, Macedonia and Achaia in chapter 1, the north and the south. And as messed up as the Corinthian church was, they were the ones encouraging Thessalonica to collect that offering for the church in Jerusalem. It was, it was Corinth's idea, and it spurred on the believers in the north. And then what? He's using the believers in the north to encourage the believers in the south yeah. in Corinth. Hey, be ready when I come so that you know, you've already collected that offering to go take care of these believers. And then here, as you just read, that church in Jerusalem is what has encouraged the Thessalonians. Because be imitators of the church of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. Mm -hmm. like, because of that persecution is why you're sending this relief to them and they are encouraging you back because of how you've stood under persecution I mean it's not just sick. Corinthians is one book over here <clears throat> Thessalonians is a book over here or Acts is a book over here it's all of them and then boom we get to chapter 3 oh, a report from who? from Timothy yeah. We see Ephesus in the middle of it. We see First and Second Timothy in the middle of it. It's not just we pluck a book out, we pluck a book out. It's all one book. Yeah. It all works so neatly together, does it not, in how the, how the Lord is, has used Paul in such a way to plant these churches or to be catalysts in these churches or to help these churches along, whatever his role was in these churches. And how they all knitly fit together, and, and one supplied the needs of the others, as you as you mentioned just a little bit ago. And I go right back. I go right back. You know, speaking of ministries, you know the uh, Imago Dei ministry. You know, when 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 they said that, and I'm not just saying it because it's deeply a conference, but they said we wouldn't be at this point right now if it wasn't for DRC. Okay, so you can't, and it's not about anything about the conference, it's not about anything about the Imago Dei ministry, it's about how everything works tightly together, directing of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ. Nothing else. Nothing else. understanding that this is none of us. It's all of Christ. But the more we seek to do, the more we seek to do, the more the evilness of this world rises up and seeks to what? seeks to prevent us from doing such things. I've said it before. The demons of hell are not going to sit back and just allow the proclamation of the gospel. They're going to do what they can do to prevent it from happening. To prevent the consolation of other believers. They're going to do what they can do to stop the truth. 
as Paul's experience, not just here, but over and over and over again in his ministry for Christ. Satan has thwarted us, has prevented us. Now, could the Lord God easily step in and, yes, for some reason, Satan has prevented them. But, he says, what gives us hope and joy what gives us hope and joy is the reward, the crown, if you will, as we stand before our Lord Jesus Christ when He returns. In verse 19, For who is our hope and joy? Or crown of, of, of exaltation? Who is this? Is it not you? He says in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that is coming. For you are our glory and our what? Our joy. He speaks of something very similar to this. And we've looked at it before. Speaking in other passages that just tie so, so neatly together. In Philippians chapter Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1. As Paul and this letter to the Philippians. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, he's saying, literally stay true to the Lord. Stay true to Christ. Stay true to Him. Stay true to who Christ is. Stay true to the gospel. Stay true to the one who saved you. Stay true to Him. I love you and I long to what? See you. Again. Again. A what? My gracious, another care again for the church. Another care for the church. You see it again. This is just and read over in Corinthians. Over and over and over again, a care for the church. Stay true to the Lord. For I love you and I long to see you, dear friends. For you are my crown. My joy I received for my work or I will receive for my work. I love you and I long to see you. My crown, my joy. He looks at the church he looks at the Philippians. He's looking at the Thessalonians. We see in Corinthians as he longs to care for them. As he longs to care for them. He longed for a care for their what? Spiritual well being. He knew that the evilness of this world is strong and it's powerful. He knew, he got that, he understood it. And he longed to be back with them. To care for them. To care for them. In his longing, in his longing to care for them. In his longing to see that everything was okay. In his longing to see the results or his longing to see the progression. He says in verse 1 of chapter 3, Therefore when we can endure it no longer, we thought it best to be left behind at Athens alone. And we sent Timothy our brother and God's fellow worker in the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you as to the faith. Wow. 
Wow. And we thought it no longer. We, we, we could not stand it any longer. We turn and we send Timothy. Send Timothy, who is our brother and God's co worker. Much trust in Timothy. Much trust. It's rare in the ministry, is it not? Trust. Trust in others to see that they'll carry on the task. I mean, after all, this is the very one that the baton's going to be handed off to. Paul says, we could stand it no longer. We stayed alone in Athens and we sent Timothy to you to see the results. To see the results. I mean, we don't we don't just come in on a Wednesday night. I know it's just a few of us. And we don't just come in on a Wednesday night and because hey, it's just the thing to do. Somebody started it, I don't know how many years ago, have midweek service. And, no, it's, at least here, we, we come in on a Wednesday night to see other faces and to care for one another, to lift one another up in prayer, to hear the needs of prayer, to hear the cares, the concerns, the wants, the desires, spiritually speaking. Those things are important. see with Paul and his life and as he has his care for the church may we have the same care for one another a care for the church a care that that is not human a care that's that's only spiritual a care that only comes from Christ an overwhelming desire to see that other believers within the church body are cared for, comforted. Needs met. May we be the same in our service for Christ. May we not be so hammering, if you will, but may we care with love truth, the gospel, compassion, and understanding that if it wasn't for the gospel in our own lives, where would we be? Where would Paul be? Where would Timothy be? As his mother and grandmother cared for him early on in his life, where would he be? So praise the Lord for caring men and women that have come before us, caring men and women of today, and caring men and women that will come after us in the service and the proclamation of the truth. To God goes the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. For Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for your truth, for your word glorified Lord thank you for leading us here this evening Lord for this time that you've given us Lord and there's one thing that jumped out to myself is to care care for others we love you and bring us back here Sunday to worship you to praise you send those whom you wish you will Lord May we, Father, serve you well. It's in your name we pray. Amen.